Wanda's the most powerful character in the MCU. Move beside Captain Marvel, if there was any debate on that. I think needless to say, I think I think that was the best episode of WandaVision by like by a lot. The episode where you see, oh, okay, this is what Marvel is talking about. This is what they mean that this is it starts off as a sitcom but really becomes a big epic blockbuster movie and that's like why it has the budget of the big MCU movie regardless now of what happens in the finale. I think I think it just made the whole series kind of we know for sure now it was all worth it. The Elizabeth Olsen I said just last week I think she topped herself but I get once again this episode is just culminates everything. It picks up right where we left off. We even get it starts off with the backstory of Agnes and her being a witch and um, her sort of, I guess, being a seemingly really powerful witch. And she it seems like she kills all her other fellow witches when they try to persecute her for practicing some sort of forbidden magic. Do you know now Tyler Hayward, he, he is, uh, he, he was trying to sort of frame Wanda. The clip he showed, yeah, she does sort of like break the glass or wall at sword and go and looks at, uh, Vision's body, but she, Wanda never takes him. We know that now. Wanda never took Vision. And this whole time, Tyler Hayward has been saying that she stole Vision, but really all he wants is he wants some of her power to bring back the Vision, the real Vision, but they're going to make him a weapon. And you can see the after credit scene. So again, there's an after credit scene, which is amazing. I thought, oh my God, that episode was the first one that really ended where I was like, okay, wow, that was a satisfying episode. And then there's even an after credit scene. So it was sort of a misdirect, I think, in a way, the, the ending of the last episode, that it was Agatha all along. Well, no, it was Wanda. Agis, Agatha's here because she wants to figure out how Wanda did all this, but it was Wanda. And I think we can throw the Mephisto kind of theories out the window now. It wasn't Mephisto, and it wasn't even Agatha, as it seemed like it was the end of last week. It was Wanda. But it wasn't out of any malicious sort of reason or anything or even I wouldn't even say selfish reason it really was just sort of an emotional kind of response she had to losing vision like Wanda literally can just create life she's pretty much proven herself to be like the Dr. Manhattan of Marvel she just creates vision it's not really the vision before but it so maybe that's that's why he doesn't remember anything. He's not actually the same vision. You learn Wanda's backstory. You get to see it play out. She actually grew up watching the Dick Van Dyke show and the Bewitched and all these other things. But Dick Van Dyke was Wanda's personal favorite. And um, so that, that, that alone was really exciting to me just because I've actually, since WandaVision started and I heard that the Dick Van Dyke was a consultant on it and they've been sort of um, but they were, that was clearly one of the things they were homaging. I've actually, I found it was on Prime for free, at least in Canada where I am. And I've been watching through, uh, it wasn't crazy about it at first, but I've been slowly watching through the Dick Van Dyke show. Um, I've only seen like maybe seven, eight episodes so far. So I've actually been watching that and I didn't think they would like literally be like showing these actual shows. And then it shows later on just as she grows up, she keeps watching different sitcoms at different stages, phases in her life. And it's even over a sitcom, kind of, that her and Vision connect. So, oh, the storytelling, just, it just, it all, like, even without the finale, the whole show has just kind of become wrapped up in this nice little bow almost now. That scene that's always been referenced since Age of Ultron. Her and her brother waiting for the Stark bomb to go off. And then we find out it did not go off because it was faulty. It's pr pretty clearly stated that here that Wanda actually stopped it with some powers. So Wanda really is like Agnes. She is a witch. She didn't know it, but she is a witch. She had powers before the experiments, it seems. And that's the reason why she's so powerful now. She's like basically a witch on steroids. And the reason Ag Agatha Harkness is in Westview is because she's trying to figure out how did Wanda do it. That's why she's been testing her. She's been trying to get information out of her by sending Pietro in and by killing the dog to see if she would bring it back to life. And Wanda, I guess she can create life. She can literally, we don't know, I guess, if she can bring back life, but she can just create if you die. I don't know if she can necessarily bring your body back to life, really, but she can just sort of make you anew. So Wanda really is a god. This is a huge, this is one of the biggest sort of revelations in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. And 
And I think it's just such, I don't think, I don't think the, the reason I thought Infinity War and Endgame were kind of the best MCU movies thus far is because they were the ones that made you, they hit me in the feels the most. I mean, sure, they had the biggest spectacle, but they were also the most kind of emotionally involving, I found. And uh, I think WandaVision has just about topped that now. This this whole episode was just a roller coaster of emotions. And I, I'm, I'm actually, like, yeah, actually, this is the first episode where I feel like a bit like, wow, I really like, felt like kind of I really went through on like an emotional journey like I said episode four had that moment that sort of left me on a cliffhanger and I was like oh vision he's dead but this this one the whole thing was just was almost making me like I don't really tear up often in movies or shows but uh this this made me a bit like teary-eyed just kind of going through Wanda's experiences and really feeling for her and uh it just like it just brought everything full circle and I think this move this show is really gonna kind of make Age of Ultron a better mcu movie than people give it credit for i think it'll kind of go up in people's rankings because uh this has just brought everything from that movie that started with wanda and vision story kind of full circle and you see yeah so her and vision connect to over after her brother's death vision visits her in her like avengers headquarters and she's watching malcolm in the middle and they they sort of they they, they bond over that and it's it's so beautiful and it's now I think I, if because even I was still to some extent wondering okay why a sitcom why is that specifically how this is all going even though I loved it but now it just it's all so perfect and uh, it's all paid off so beautifully and we haven't even gotten the finale yet it's left me in a way that's just I feel so warm inside honestly and I, I just when they were starting to make you think Wanda's a villain this kind of disproves anyone who was thinking that but and I, I suppose some people might think oh is that disappointing did they was out of her being a villain but honestly i think this only kind of makes you makes her even more of a great character we kind of get to peel back the curtains and we see it all and it was just you know, all the build up to it just made it even that much more rewarding and now we know like everything just comes together this episode and it's it's I'm trying, you know, I've, I've avoided since since my first episode review anyways i've mostly avoided swearing but i've got to say this this episode of WandaVision, if I could just use like two words to describe it, I would say it's it's fucking beautiful. Ooh, you kiss your mother with that mouth? And um, I think it's already solidified itself as just a true MCU and just a television masterpiece. Just even before the finale, if 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 it doesn't get nominated for best limited series, if it's not at least nominated, and Elizabeth Olsen isn't at least nominated for best actress in a limited series or whatever at the Emmys, then that would be criminal. Because a superhero thing or not, like, this this was just an absolutely beautiful journey. And uh, I said this about episode four, but even more so, like, this is just, I think, one of the best episodes of television I've ever seen. And, yeah, Disney Plus, really, with the show, they are giving us, like, HBO quality stuff. This episode was freaking amazing. It all paid off, and it was a nice long episode. I still don't see the series being six hours, but... uh really just fucking beautiful but one word to say to describe it it's a masterpiece so i couldn't be more excited for the finale so that's my thoughts on this uh absolutely incredible episode of television and um as always thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and take care bye